Hi guys, uh, Dr. Margolin. Uh, sorry I took a break from patient care and I'd like to answer an important question about vitamin D. I, you don't need me to know that vitamin D can uh, help you um, during the pandemic. Uh, everybody talks about it. However, the question that I ask, how to supplement it? How do I know that my levels are good? Do I need to maintain it? Can they draw up? what is considered to be the right level. This is the topic of this video. Thank you. Okay, my name is Howard Barkston. I've been coming to Dr. Margolin since 2015 and the results has been fantastic. Hi, I'm Kathleen Hagedorn. I've been coming to Dr. Margolin since 2011. He has helped me tremendously with different uh, pain problems that I've had and I am thankful that I found him. I will need a Rickman, and I've been coming to Dr. Margolin for three years, and I thank God for him because he has done all he can to manage my pain. This is such a blessing just to be able to come here and know that somebody is concerned about me. I'm Mary Maynard, and I've been coming to Dr. Margolis for six months, and I'm just in a lot better than what I was. I, uh, a lot of times I don't have the pain that I did have before, so he's really helping me. So vitamin D, if you ask me this question about 20 years ago um, when I took my boards, it didn't sound like a very difficult question. We talked about vitamin D and rickets and kids. Um, yeah, in adults can be low, take your blood levels and supplement. Um, you can take multivitamins, it has daily dose, which was at that time 600 to 800 units uh, per day. And we're talking about D3 international units per day. What is the problem with that? There are several problems. First, most people who follow this advice end up with inadequate uh, levels of vitamin D, cannot maintain, maintain them. They're deficient in uh, vitamin D. Um, and we know that in certain groups, African-Americans, for example, here are 80% are deficient in vitamin D. Asians, according to some sources, 40%. Many people who for sure don't supplement vitamin D, uh, primarily in the areas with poor um, exposure to sun, uh, so-called cloudy states like here in Ohio, they are deficient or insufficient. So how you go about it, what's our experience. There was a lot of attention to vitamin D over the last 10, 15 years, even before the pandemic. Um, let me share some um, clinical experience that we had generally. First, you do need to supplement vitamin D, and I think you need to supplement for most people on a continuous basis. It's not only good for your bones, uh, it's not related to rickets, but it's actually uh, enhances your immune system. It has many other um, uh, positive impacts on your body, including mood stabilization, pain threshold, and others. So um, how you do that? Well, if you can, definitely get your levels, right? And then it sounds simple. You get your levels. Most labs in America the uh, normal levels between 20 plus, let's say 20 to 25, and usually up to 60 or up to 100. And that's generally very important to um, uh, mention that there are two ways to measure vitamin D. One is nanogram per ml. Um, it's usually what you see in the labs. And the other one is nanomole per liter. And the difference is very big. For example, if you get level 60 nanogram per ml, it may be up a little bit of normal here in America, but it's 150 nanomole per liter. And that's higher even borderline toxic. So you need to know your units, pay attention to your units. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, um, 
honestly, I don't know who sets what is normal, what is abnormal. But the levels that are set in most labs seem to be too low, according to recent studies. Um, and I'm going, I'm cutting to the cheese. And primarily during the pandemic, if you want to keep your levels around 20 plus, 22, 25, you're technically not deficient, but the levels are not sufficient for um, immune boost or not sufficient enough. And there is no reason for an average person not to have higher levels. Again, this is not a medical advice, talk to your doctor, but this is our impression. That's supported by studies. And how do we know that? If we measure vitamin D, let's say in some uh, tribes that are exposed to sun because of their dress code, uh, we see that we find those levels in 40 to 60 nanogram per ml, which is a higher normal here in America. We also see from uh, additional research that 40 to 60, according to some opinions, to 70 nanomol per, uh, nan nano, apologies, nanogram per ml is the optimal range for uh, best um, immune protection. How you achieve it? Again, ideally go get, take your levels, then follow medical advice. If you're insufficient, you need to be more aggressive. Conservative way, if you're significantly insufficient, take, taking 50,000 units every 10 days, maybe every, even every week or every two weeks. Again, under no circumstances, take 50,000 units more often uh, without uh, talking to your doctor, because if you take, there was a case that person took 50,000 units a day, and that was a, a case of overdose, which is a very rare. But if you take it with certain intervals, usually for four to eight weeks, um, you bump your levels to um, reasonable uh, level, which is considered to be normal. Now, a couple of tips. First, it's a fat soluble vitamin. You want to take it on full stomach or with healthy fat like omega-3 and there is a combination between omega-3 and vitamin D. Uh, secondly, uh, the possible um, interaction between vitamin D and melatonin. Melatonin also, according to some sources, has protective effect uh, for COVID-19. Um, it's, it's a sleep, it's part of the sleep cycle, but apparently it may can buy to, the, to certain receptor, which is important for the virus. So, you don't want to take them together. So best thing, take vitamin D with the breakfast in the morning and melatonin at night. Um, and I'm going to talk about some supplement options. That's number one. Number two, uh, from my experience, if you don't have maintenance, let's say, okay, it was low, you supplemented for eight weeks, now it's normal. What's considered to be normal? Let's say 28 or 25. Many times your primary doctor will tell you, hey, it's good, or hey, it's good and take um, daily dose with multivitamin, 600 units of D3 a day. Uh, from my experience, most probably in two or three months, you would be insufficient or deficient again. And even this level is not enough. So um, most people would need sub to keep supplementing vitamin D3. Um, and there, is, there are different opinions. Most experts think that you should take 2,000 units a day. Some experts believe that you should take it up to 4,000 units a day. It's not a medical advice, talk to your doctor. But below that, most of the time, primarily during the pandemic, you won't reach optimal level. Um, also, if you take vitamin D3 with magnesium, uh, the absorption is enhanced. Um, in the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about different supplements um, and is there a risk of toxicity with vitamin D. Uh, please bear with me. The last thing I want to mention, I like this review called uh, Immunologic Effects of Vitamin D. Uh, I'll try to post the link to this article um, under this video. And Without further ado, let me talk about supplements. Okay, there are different forms of vitamin D supplements. Um, most common are tablets uh, or capsules, uh, and they come in 
different any any different form of size again be careful with high doses be careful with low doses okay we say regular multivitamin will not get you where you need to be that's my experience you need at least 2000 units um or if your doctor approves it maybe you can take um let's say 10,000 units once a week or once in 10 days and so so on uh once in five days it's just simple math um because it's a fat soluble vitamin uh i like combination I generally i don't have commercial interest i like for example zachler products and this is vitamin d combined with omega-3 yeah so you, you you kill two birds with one stone and you help vitamin d absorption what I don't like about this product, it's um, um, you need to take three capsules. Capsule, capsules are pretty big, but if you take three capsules, you get 2,000 units of vitamin D and you get uh, healthy fat. All right, I like this. Now, there is also a debate in the literature on whether or not vitamin D should be combined with vitamin K2. Uh, which supposed to move the calcium into the bones and, no, don't, and not let calcium precipitate in your blood vessels. Uh, while debate is going on, I don't see a big downside in doing that. So this is a combination of vitamin D3 and K2. It's very inexpensive. You have no commercial interest and there are other options. It's not combined with fat, but again, you kill two birds with one stone um taking two vitamins together downside this is pretty high this is 5000 units so do your own math um you can take it uh every other day every two days or maybe every day if you're deficient i also got a question should i take higher doses of vitamin d if i'm diagnosed with the virus or oh, i think i got the virus clinically again i i did not see we, we i don't see um significant studies as outpatients our experience, people did feel better. The logic says, and the, the studies that are around, that if you're low on vitamin D, you got the virus, there is no downside to increase vitamin D. Um, and again, you can give it as, you can take it as a boost, uh, let's say 10,000 units, or if you know you're low, maybe you can take one time 50,000 units, so you can take it daily. Um, you need to, to ask your doctor, but yes, I think there is a benefit. I don't think there is a problem taking it together with zinc and quercetin or vitamin C, uh, as we discussed in the past. I also want to mention that for kids, um, there was a study that taking even up to 1,000 units a day has a protective effect, but you need to talk to pediatrician. There is liquid vitamin D for kids, there is chewable vitamin D for kids, and there is sublingual vitamin D3 for kids. So there are a lot of options. And uh, I'm sure you can find the option that will fit your needs. Overall, it is a good idea to supplement vitamin D. I maybe seen a couple of high levels of vitamin D, very few. They were not clinically significant. Important point about toxicity. The most, most concerns, the, the worst case scenario is you're going to get high calcium because vitamin D enhances calcium absorption from your gut. So if you check your vitamin D level, check your calcium. And if you see you have high vitamin D, I mean, let's say 100 or something, 100 plus and high calcium, it, it is a concern. It's very rare though, very rare. I don't remember uh, significant cases. I think there is one case in the literature, again, that somebody intentionally took 50,000 units of vitamin D every day and calcium every day for some time, I don't know, two, three months. And he developed 320 plus level uh, in in nano, nanograms of of uh, vitamin D, which is uh, like eight to ten times higher than recommended, and um, he basically developed some complications. But you really need to do something outrageous to get there. So I think you, we should be careful. But I think it is a good idea to supplement vitamin D. I appreciate your question, and I appreciate everybody who supports our channel. I hope everybody um, is safe and healthy and uh, we will continue. Thank you.